Hey guys, welcome back to Egon Class. Today we're gonna to be looking at an FRQ question from the 2005 AP Micro exam. This is the B version of the test and the number two question. Now this particular question is all about perfect competition. We've been given three different curves without names, a variety of different points, and a whole lot of different price levels. And we're gonna to have to identify some curves, we're gonna to have to identify why curves do the things that they do, um, why the gap is between different curves. So let's get started. All right, so the graph above shows the short run cost structure of a firm in a perfectly competitive industry. Part A says identify the cost curves that are denoted by each of the following labels. All right, so curve one dips down, comes back up. This is going to be our marginal cost curve or the MC curve. Curve two, the higher of the two, uh, is going to be our average total cost curve. Now the one directly below it is our curve three, and this is going to be our average variable cost, or our AVC. We know that the AVC is gonna sit lower than the average total cost because average total cost comes from the average fixed cost plus the average variable cost. All right, so part B has us explain why curve one does each of the following as output increases. So we know that curve one is our marginal cost curve. Now this is a fairly easy answer to put down on paper, but I wanna explain a little more so you fully understand it. And then we're gonna jump over to the production function to kind of explain it a little better. Now stage one and stage two is what we're looking at here, and we know that total product in stage one is increasing at an increasing rate. And then as soon as we get to stage two, total product is still increasing, it's just increasing at a diminishing rate. Now this all has to do with what marginal product is doing. So here's our marginal product curve. And we know that it goes up in the beginning, our marginal product increases and then starts to diminish. And then when it hits stage three, it's gonna go negative, but we're not worried about that part here. Now, our marginal cost curve is basically the inverse of our marginal product curve. Because as diminishing returns kick in, marginal cost starts to go up. So this helps us understand and explain the answer a little bit better. So we have to explain why the marginal cost curve initially decreases. And this is because in the early stages of production, the firm will experience increasing marginal product. We see that on the marginal product curve as it benefits from specialization resulting in a decreasing marginal cost. So we see that dip in the marginal cost. Now, part two asks us why it finally increases. So eventually after marginal product increases, we get that increasing marginal product, we go on to the diminishing marginal product. So as production increases, the firm starts to experience diminishing marginal returns, and the marginal cost increases per extra unit produced. So we get that dip down in the beginning, and then that increasing marginal cost afterward as diminishing marginal product starts to set in. Both parts C and D deal with the distance between curve two and curve three, or the average total cost and the average variable cost curves. So it asks what measure of cost is represented by the vertical distance between curve two and curve three. These green arrows represent that distance. We know we get average total cost by adding the average fixed cost to the average variable cost, so the distance between them is represented by the average fixed cost. If we drop them arrows down, it becomes a little more clear. This is our average fixed cost. Those distances represent the distance between those two curves. Now, it goes on in D to explain why the vertical distance between curve two and curve three decreases as output increases. And this has to do with the fact that it's a fixed cost. When we have a fixed cost, the more we produce, the more it is, that average is spread over a larger quantity. An average fixed cost, as long as production is increasing, continues to go down. Now part E kind of kicks us into a different area here, but it says using the letters on the graph, identify two points on the firm's short run supply curve. Now the short run supply curve comes from the marginal cost curve, or curve one here. So when we, we look at it, we know that in the short run, they a firm will continue producing as long as it hits or exceeds average variable cost. So any point K, or sorry, at the average variable cost and above is gonna count. So points L and K both fall on that particular curve. Hopefully you were able to follow along with that and get something out of it. If not, check out some of my earlier videos dealing with perfect competition and all the other unit three stuff. As usual guys, thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.